Yeah, yes. Uh, Leighton Baines as well. I think that um, uh, our injury list is uh, not too bad at all. I think that uh, obviously we've got a couple of long-termers with Van Gaal and the car. So, but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's good to see that the squad is getting better. Yeah, yeah. Um, Andy, you mentioned that you're going to have a look at the squad for the Euros. Yeah. Is there any chance that you could make the squad for the Euros? Yeah. 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 Um, obviously, Mangal unfortunately is injured at the end of the season, but we've uh, we've got a number of centre halves we can choose from to make the replacement for Ash. What then do you make of Brighton? One player has drawn two of the last seven games all competition. Chris Houghton, outstanding. Um, what he's done at Brighton, I think that um, uh, he's a fantastic manager and has, has proven to be over a number of years now. And uh, and Brighton are reaping the benefits of his his managerial experience for many years now. I think, and uh, I think that they've uh, uh, accumulated a very good squad and very shrewd in their market, and that's true. And, and the way they're organised, so it's not just that they've um, are surviving now; it's that they're playing exceptionally well, scoring goals, picking <coughs> up points at home and away. So uh, it'll be a hugely difficult game for us, and it's not one. We can underestimate it all on uh, on Saturday. So how important is this one game in ensuring that Everton aren't dragged back into a relegation battle? Oh, it's massively important. I think that we're all aware of the the disappointment away from home, but we have to look at the home results and say that that's where, uh, at the moment, our bread and butter lies. That's where we've uh, we've been good. We've won the last two home games. I think we've only conceded two goals that were two penalties. Um, so we've played very well at home. Um, the club has played very well at home over recent seasons, but our away form is the big, the big problem we have. So we have to put that behind us at the moment and make sure that there's no legacy from the disappointment of the last two away games and be in top form on Saturday because we need to obviously get a win. And uh, we have put a lot of pressure on ourselves because of the, the last two away results. and. Uh, we have to cope with that pressure and deliver and deliver for the fans who were very, very important to us, home and away. And uh, uh, we've got to give them something to get behind us on Saturday and uh, cheer us on to win. Is there a sense then that you need to lift the club down? Well, I think the play we need to lift ourselves. And, and we, if we lift ourselves to our, our level of performance that we've shown at home, then we can deliver a performance that could win. And that will obviously give everybody a bit of satisfaction at the weekend rather than the disappointment we've suffered over the, the last two away games. Do you, Sam, do you still want to be at this club <laughs> beyond this season? Of course, I mean, you know, there's tough times and uh, there's uh, there's times when you have to, uh, you know, draw in uh, and close the doors and s stay focused on what you want to try and achieve and I think that that's very disappointing for everybody, myself included, that we have slipped where we have slipped to when we put ourselves in such a fantastic position in the early stages of me walking through the door. It's always been said for me, and that's said for me when I came here, that I came out of retirement because there was a, a long-term plan at Everton, a, a long-term aspect of, of going forward that I was excited about being a part of and understanding the history of Everton Football Club and the amount of mates that were here when Everton were very successful, the Reedies and the Andy Grays and the Adrian East and the Paul Bracewells. I know all about Everton and, and what it demands and what you've got to try and achieve and and that was uh, that was an exciting prospect going forward rather than, you know, short term in I want it to be a long term appointment. Do you have to sort the relationship with the fans then because it's taken a bit of exception to expectation being compared to the likes of Newcastle our our fans get behind the team when when they are like every fan. But everybody's passionate. Everybody has ambition. And when they so don't see the players playing to the level that they expect, they show the disapproval, and rightly so. You know, and away from home is where that problem really, really lies. We've got to make sure that problem doesn't happen on Saturday. We've got to make sure we we excite the fans, and they will get behind us if we give them the sort of performances we gave against Leicester and we gave against uh, Crystal Palace. But for you personally as well, do you need to do more with regard to the fans? I mean, I, in regards uh, to those comments with, about Newcastle and West Ham, do you, do you need to clarify them? Or? Well, 
Look, every fans, every club's fans have a lot of passion, a lot of, and like I said at the time, the history of Everton is far greater than, than Newcastle and, and West Ham. But every fan has great demands, and when there's big crowds, the demand is bigger, you know, and that's that's what it's all about. And I think that, uh, for me, Everton is completely different from Newcastle, or West Ham. But it was just a comparison; it wasn't a, anything other than that. That, but the. The, the different ambition to Everton is different to Newcastle and different to West Ham. But if you don't play as well as they expect you to play and don't entertain as well as do, they show the disapproval, and that's what you have to deal with as a as a manager on a on a on the basis of you've got to turn that around and get get the reverse for that and get everybody behind you. Our fans at home, I think, have been fantastic since I've been here. I think they've got behind the team even when they're not playing too well. And helped them along the way to, to get a result, but certainly in the last two home games, they were they were fantastic. As far as you're and concerned, since I've been here, of course. As far as you're concerned as well, Mr. Mashiri wanted to stay beyond this season, and what talks are you having with him as regards plans for the future and plans for him to push forward? Well, I, I'm having talks with him, but obviously those talks are confidential, of course, and uh, and uh, we're in a difficult period at the moment. Yes, but uh, we've got to try and. Uh, turn that around and we've got to start on Saturday it's my responsibility to get the team to play to the level that we know they can play players responsibility to, on the on the field of play to to play their best and I think uh, that when they play the best that uh, we can give anybody a game and uh, and of course when it comes to uh, Brighton on Saturday it's more about them delivering the performance as well as dealing with Brighton because uh, I think they'll feel a little bit under pressure like we all are at the moment Top seven then. If if we can turn our away, but can keep our own results going, yeah. But then we must turn our away results around if we if we're going to get get to that position. You know, I think that uh, you know we we put ourselves quickly into a position where we could try and achieve that, and obviously we failed at that now. But I mean, you know, first thing for me is you know picking up a couple of more wins to be to be safe, and and, and I think everybody apart from the top six or so does that initially and then see where you can go see how far you can go you can win three or four out the last five games and, and finish seventh if you have a good run at the end of the season okay thank you guys thank you